Just don't scare the hair. Our brand new game show at six. Now on BBC One. The results are in. Hello, welcome to Final Score. Games spread all over this glorious Easter weekend, but 16 of the top flight are in action today and there are big battles going on at the top and bottom of the championship. The Easter Bunny can forget about delivering me chocolate eggs while I've got two as sweet as this on the sofa. The inimitable Garth Crooks and the intimidating Steve Claridge have been engrossed, I tell you, by the action this afternoon. They are desperate to share their musings, but let's bring you straight up to speed with the Premier League this afternoon. The lunchtime kickoff saw Manchester United beat Everton by a goal to nil. Hernandez continuing uh, to look a £6 million bargain. His late-headed winner in the lunchtime kickoff there has given United a nine-point lead. It's Aston Villa 1, Stoke 1. Darren Bent's equaliser, a welcome Philip uh, as absent manager Gerard Houllier recovers uh, from his midweek heart scare. It's Blackpool 1, Newcastle 1. Not exactly a relaxing day by the seaside for relegation threatened Blackpool. Uh, they've had to come from behind to level against Newcastle and Charlie Adam has hit the post in the second half for the hosts. Liverpool 3, Birmingham 0. Liverpool are coasting. Rodriguez has scored twice. Uh, Kautz added his seventh goal in six matches. It's Sunderland 2, Wigan 1. Wigan could be slipping back into the bottom three having gone into the lead. Sunderland and now leading through Jordan Henderson's goal. And it's Tottenham 2, West Brom 1. Jermaine Defoe has put Spurs ahead for the first time in the last few moments. Uh, Pavlyuchenko had earlier cancelled out Odom Wingy's opener for West Brom. And it's Wolves 1, Fulham 0. Stephen Fletcher's first half goal could be vital as Wolves look to climb out of the bottom three this evening. OK, let's get details then from that lunchtime kickoff at Old Trafford. Everton, the visitors, Jonathan Pearce was watching. Nil to Manchester United. Chelsea, of course, kick off at Stamford Bridge at 5.30 against West Ham, who currently are rock bottom of the Premier League. But let's go to the Stadium of Light. It's been a controversial, action-packed afternoon, and it continues, Steve Sutton. Yes, it does. Sunderland have just been uh, awarded a penalty. Uh, Gabby Sessignon, Stefan Sessignon, uh, judged to have been brought down in the box by uh, the Wigan defender Al Karaz. And it looks as if it's uh, Sessignon who will take the penalty himself. If uh, ever a game could have been described as a roller coaster, and I hate that cliche, then this is it. But uh, Sessignon is uh, lining up to take the penalty. Could this be 3 1 to Sunderland to put all their relegation worries firmly in the draw for another season? He's uh, taking his time, he's running up now, right footed, he sends the keeper the wrong way into the bottom corner of the net. Sunderland 3, Wigan 1. What a turnaround at the Stadium of Light. And there's been a goal at Anfield. Damien Johnson. Yes, it's a hat-trick for Maxi Rodriguez. Liverpool romping to a 4-0 lead here with, uh, what, 15 or so minutes to go. Rodriguez has stolen the show, really. He opened the scoring. Um, two goals, uh, three goals from him, one from Dirk Kaus, who can't stop scoring. Seven in six for him. Uh, but Rodriguez is the story. A big smile on the face of the Liverpool manager, Thumbs up to his players from Kenny Dalglish on the touchline. It's Liverpool for Birmingham nil. Uh, let's go to Bloomfield Road. Richard Askham watching the visit of Newcastle United. One apiece at the moment, but to get out the bottom three, the way things stand at the moment, they need three points. Yes, they do, Gabby. A really good match, this one. Both sides have put together some flowing moves, particularly Blackpool, who seem to have rediscovered that up and atom quality that had deserted in Holloway's side of late, but Newcastle have also played their part. They took the lead through Peter Lovenkrantz, DJ Campbell equalising with a flick from a corner that was adjudged to have crossed the line. A very, very close call indeed. Throwing a couple of penalty claims for Blackpool as well, Gabby. Charlie Adam hitting a post and Newcastle just resurgent in the last few minutes. It's anyone's game, this one. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to Molyneux now. Wolves in the lead. Start of the day, rock bottom. As things stand, they're out of the bottom three. And as things stand, in the stand is Mark Hughes, Steve Lee. Yes, naughty boy, uh, Mark Hughes. The heat certainly told on him in the second half. He was sent to the stands by referee Michael Oliver. He took exception to Hangerland's booking 
for fouling Fletcher and aimed a trusty right boot at a water bottle. Cue a seat in the director's box. And Wall still leading from that golden goal from Steve Fletcher in the first half. It's the difference between the two sides. Fulham have had much the better of the possession and the chances. Mick McCarthy's side grimly hanging on to the points. Fletcher has uh, had a good chance, two good chances in the second half. He's now been subbed off. Ebanks Blake is on. Fulham have brought on Zamora to try and add a little bit of goals to their repertoire. So far, though, Wall still hanging on to the points. 1-0. Let's go to White Hart Lane. As things stand, it's Spurs who are in that all-important fourth spot. Jonathan Ledyard watching the visit of West Brom. And it's all come good for Jermaine Defoe and Tottenham Hotspur. Defoe with his 100th Premier League goal just a few moments ago, rifling in from just the edge of the area. The first really good chance, first clear-cut chance, and he took it. Everyone happy, but we didn't see that T-shirt. Maybe it has been too hot to wear it underneath. But Spurs, the first time in the lead after going behind to Peter Odenwenge's goal early on. Pavlochenko's had chances and caused frustration for his manager, Harry Redknapp, before he did get the equaliser. Spurs pressing all the while, and Bale has a chance now just past the far post. But at the other end, Peter Odenwingen causing all sorts of heart-stopping moments for Gomez and the Spurs defence. But it still remains, with 14 minutes to go, Spurs on course for that fourth place in the Premier League. Uh, let's go to Villa Park. Ivan Gaskell-Stoke just hit the back of the neck, but it's not allowed. Yes, uh, substitute Ricky Fuller has just seen a goal disallowed, a marginal offside decision. John Walters is co-partner, or the, the man that has just been uh, just watching this, as there's another controversial decision underneath the whole end. It'll actually be a, an uncontroversial goal kick in the end. But John Walters, another strike partner uh, of the Stoke uh, substitute, has had a goal disallowed. The ones that were scored today, two fine examples of the striker's art, Watched by former Villa centre-forward Peter With He knew a thing or two about finishing. Special guest here today. They're the only distinguishing features, really, of a game that's rather got bogged down. Two sides rather cancelling one another out. First, though, Kenwin Jones planting a firm header past Brad Friedel in the early stages via, yes, you've guessed it, a Rory Delat throw. And then Villa level by the break. Darren Bent's seventh league goal since his record-breaking move from Sunderland in January. A wonderful stooping header steered in off the post. A point might just suit them both here, and that's what they're going to get unless things change. Let's go to Molyneux. A huge goal there, Steve Lee. Yes, 1-1 now, and Zamora's presence in the box was made to count. He knocked down Hagelang's deep left-footed cross into the box. Andy Johnson, the substitute, nipped in as he always did at Birmingham City and elsewhere. It's 1-1. Great finish, but this is what it means uh, to the bottom of the table. No, I'll tell you that in a moment, because there's a goal at the Stadium of Light, Steve Sutton. Yes, Gabby, an extraordinary turnaround this game. Remember, Sunderland were one down, they now lead by four goals to one. It's a second goal for Jordan Henderson. Sunderland broke through uh, Sessignon down the left. Henderson was running into the box, the far right of the box, all on his own, screaming for the ball. Sessignon kept his head, he looked up, he crossed the ball. Henderson, for the simplest of chances, to hammer it into the back of the net. Sunderland four, Wigan one. Now we'll have a look at the bottom of the table and how things have changed and flip-flopped throughout this afternoon because Wolves, who were rock bottom at the start of the day, were out of the bottom three for a lot of this afternoon. They're now back in it. West Ham, of course, kick off at tea time at Stamford Bridge. Their bottom half. Wolves then second from bottom. Uh, Wigan now back in the bottom three, but it's Blackpool who've made the most dramatic leap in the last five minutes or so out of the bottom three. And Sunderland, they're not even on that page anymore. They were languishing at 16th, 15th at one point this afternoon, uh, but they're now... Uh, up into 10th uh, place, and that, uh, just and, behind their arch And for me, Newcastle. Gabby, that's the performance of the day. It is a cracking game for all the right reasons. Sunderland take the lead. Um, Guillain pulls his hamstring, having pulled one back, and you think they've lost the, the, the one striker who can really affect the game. You think they're going to lose. They're struggling, and suddenly... There's a penalty decision gave, given by Probit to make it 3-1. Barnes has gone to hospital, well back off in the first half. Absolutely, it all goes on, but the, the performance and they, the way they pull it around is absolutely fantastic. I have to say, I didn't agree with Lee Probit's penalty decision no, to make it 3-1. I thought that was a turning point in the game. OK, thank you for the moment. Uh, it'll be interesting what Roberto Martinez says about that a little bit later. His Wigan side were going so well there. Now, look like they're going to be annihilated. OK, well, there was a big game at the top of the championship this lunchtime. Cardiff took on QPR. Steve Wilson and Mark Bright were watching for us. Bellamy, well played. Bothroy. Burke in the middle. Bellamy too. And Whittingham. Olofinjana arriving. Jay Bothroy went for goal! What a goal and what a start! 
Tarat with the corner. Well defended twice by Kanan. Back to Adel Tarat. Rangers with plenty of green and white shirts in there. Goes for goal! Oh my goodness, he scored! Less than 10 minutes played and another top draw goal from Adel Tarat. It's one each. Bothroyd, good persistence. Bellamy's arriving in the middle. Burke, two. Bothroyd waits. Oh, Bellamy, 2 1. Only needs one chance. Bellamy got it. Bellamy took it. Cardiff, two. Queen's Park Rangers, one. Here's Routledge on loan from Newcastle. He used to be on loan here at Cardiff, that's why he's getting the stick. Looking for Tarapt. Tarapt with a chance here. And oh. he takes it. It's 2 2. Out of nothing. Adel Tarab scores, and Queen's Park Rangers are level. Which means that QPR don't go up today and that Norwich are in second place, but there's a goal in the Premier League we want to tell you about at White Hart Lane. Jonathan Ledgard. Absolutely crucial. Manchester City fans, pin your ears back, because it is now Tottenham 2, West Bromwich Albion 2. Simon Cox, out on the left-hand side, on as a second-half substitute, has just fired an absolutely unstoppable shot past Gomez. Two all, nine minutes left. You saw it, Steve. Oh, it was a marvellous strike. I mean, uh, he gets it on the, on the left-hand side of the penalty area, just cuts inside of Galas, and then just bends the ball with whip and, uh, you know, and curve and lots and lots of height and uh, gives Gomez absolutely no chance into the far corner. Wonderful strike, and uh, they'll probably be kicking themselves that, that he had to do it against them, sort of, Tottenham and, and Harry in it particular. Would have, it would have put them on 57 points. It would have taken them above Manchester City. That's a massive goal. Oh, and, of course, that fourth place is critical because they obviously want to qualify for that Champions League spot. So, it's a big goal uh, for West Brom, that. OK, uh, let's uh, check in on the teams who are trying to get into the uh, playoff places in the Championship. Hull been on a magnificent run, but it all seems to have crumbled a bit today at the KC Stadium. Paul Addison watching there. Certainly has Hull trail here, Gabby, by four goals to two. Thrilling first half, five goals in it. Uh, Hull took the lead on three minutes through Jay Simpson, but then Borough turned it completely around. A Scott McDonald hat-trick and another one for Julio Arca had Borough leading 4-1 at the break. Anthony Gerrard with a fight back for Hull, cracking shot from 30 yards out and it's Hull on the attack now as they desperately try to get back into this match but they trail by four goals to two. So if Hull's uh, challenge has been snuffed out today, Burnley certainly hasn't at Pride Park. Andrew James. Yes, Gabby, I'm looking at Burnley and thinking of Blackpool and the end of last season and that late charge that they had. Burnley leading here by four goals to two. At half-time, they were out of it. 2-1 down to a Derby side that were playing exhibition football at that point. Burnley didn't seem interested. They got back to 2-2 with a penalty. Uh, Joan Eagles tapping in after Jones had saved the first uh, effort from Eagles. Jamie Ward sent off straight red for that one. Then Wade Elliott heading Burnley into a 3-2 lead. And then Chris McCann trying his luck from long range. The ball goes going in off the post to give Burnley a 4-2 lead. It will be three, win uh, three wins in a row for them. They're very much the form inside. Derby 2, Burnley 4. And they'd be level on points with Leeds, who dropped out of the top six yesterday when they could only manage a goal or straw against Reading. It's so tight around there. Let's check in at the Stadium of Light. Just because they're 4-1 up against Wigan doesn't mean they're immune to more injury problems. Mal Bronk now going off. He'd come on in the first half for Welbeck. Steve Sutton. Well, that's the good news as far as Steve Bruce is concerned because everybody else who's gone down has, uh, has ended up in the, uh, the treatment room at, uh, at Sunderland. Remember, Barnsley off in the first half, Welbeck's gone. Um, Mulbrank went down, he tripped, there was no, no tackle involved, seemed to get his leg caught in the grass and went over. For a minute there, Steve Bruce was uh, wondering if that uh, jinx had st uh, struck again, but fortunately for him, Mulbrank was able to hobble off to the sideline, get some treatment and get back on. Still Sunderland 4, Wigan 1. Let's go to Fratton Park. Swansea still can't win away from home, but they're not losing, which is a positive, I guess. Alex Gordon-Martin? No, they're not, Gabby. It's still goalless, but their lack of inspiration away from home looks set to continue here. You'd be forgiven for thinking Pompey were the ones in the mix for promotion. David Nugent and Herman Freilison both went close early on, but apart from that, it's been pretty disappointing. Brendan Rodgers demanded that his side showed Swan's character and quality of football here today. Well, so far they've shown neither. It's still Portsmouth nil, Swansea nil. 
It's been an eventful afternoon at Bramall Lane. Uh, Sheffield United were in the lead, looking like they had fight in them, but Harry Gross and a draw will do them no good at all. Absolutely none at all. It's going to be 2-2 uh, at the moment anyway, and I have to say that uh, sums up for me the way that their season's gone. Coslett with a sitter of the header on 77 minutes. He should have scored. They've got to win. They aren't. It's 2-2. To Vicarage Road, Mark Bishop, the only reporter today who bothered to take a thermometer with him. Uh, how hot has the football been? Uh, the football is very hot, Gabby. Still, Watford 1, Barnsley nil. Malcolm Mackay, bless him, believes that mathematically his Watford side still have a chance of making the playoffs. Few would uh, disagree with him, but it's looking slim. Nevertheless, John Eustace's uh, goal after just 43 seconds has given Watford a real boost. Barnsley did the credit. They've come back in the second half. A real 30-yard thunderbolt from the 17-year-old Reuben Noble. Lazarus had Scott Lope stretching, but Watford still lead by one goal to nil. Uh, let's go to Anfield. Another goal there, Damien Johnson. It's gone to Liverpool, Birmingham City's afternoon. Misery is complete. It was Joe Cole on as a second-half substitute. Nothing on, really. Speculative effort. Slipped through the grasp of the substitute goalkeeper Colin Doyle on for the injured Ben Foster. It's now Liverpool 5, Birmingham 0. Of course, Birmingham not entirely safe from relegation either. Even Joe Cole coming to life under the magic that is the man management of Kenny Dalgleish. Uh, let's go to Tynecastle, the only three o'clock kickoff in the SPL. Hearts hanging on to their lead over Motherwell, Ian Turner. They are. What a fine game this has been, Gabby. Hearts led 3 0 thanks to a Craig Thompson penalty and nice goals from Scatchell and Stevenson. But Motherwell have come storming back with goals from Sutton and Haitley. And with just three minutes to go, if they could get another one, it'll be a fourth draw in a row for Hearts as they chase third top spot. 3 2 Hearts lead. Dunfermline very close to becoming an SPL side once again. At East End Park, they're taking on their arch rivals, Wraith Rovers. Brian McLaughlin watching. Yeah, with 90 seconds left for play, Gabby. They lead by two goals to one. John Baird gave Wraith Rovers a lead four minutes before half time, but a double from Martin Hardy has given Dunfermline pole position in the place for SPL football next season. A point today, sorry, a win today would take them four points clear with just two games left. Confirming two, Wraith Rovers one. And thank you. A goal at the Withdean Stadium, Andy Barwell. Yes, and it's an equaliser for Southampton. Brighton had taken the lead in first half stoppage time. Ashley Barnes taking full advantage of a mistake by Radi Jaidi. But with his first touch of the game, substitute David Connolly has just about brought them level. It's been a good equaliser from him. A very smart turn from Connolly after a head down by Ricky Lambert. Brighton one, Southampton one. Uh, let's go to the county ground. John Anderson, uh, Notts County, looking for some crucial points to take away from there today. How's it going? It looks like they're going to get them because two county goals in six minutes may mean ultimately that they stay up and Swindon go down the first. A cross-come shot by Alan Judge from the left-hand side, which drifted beyond David Lucas and into the net for 1-1. And then Lee Hughes, on as a substitute, hasn't been in great goal-scoring form of late, but he recaptured it, capitalising on an error, rounding Lucas and tapping it into the net. Swindon had led at half-time deservedly through Matt Ritchie, but at the moment they are heading into the fourth flight of English football for the first time in 25 years. It's Swindon 1, Notts County 2. John, thank you. What a comeback at Tynecastle, Ian Turner. Yes, Gabby, I love to say I told you so, but Motherwell have come back from 3-0 down and John Sutton with his second-headed goal, this one just two minutes from time, has now made it Hearts 3 and Motherwell 3. What a game. Uh, let's head to the Memorial Ground. Uh, Bristol Rovers looking for survival points there today. Tony Colliver, how's it going? Well, as you've just come to me, Bristol Rovers have just equalised. Gavin Williams volleying home from just inside the box. But uh, it's a very, very lively game here. Visitors led thanks to goals from Paul Benson and Kyle Reid. But in the second half, there's been two sendings off for Charlton. Kyle Reid, who goal scorer there, and captain Jose Semedo, both for second book of all offences. The home side, though, has struggled to break down a stubborn Charlton defence, but a couple goals back through Wayne Brown and as you just came to me there Gavin Williams 2-2 here and let's go to Spotland. There have been lots of goals for Alan Biggs to tell us about. How's it going? Yeah, it's still Rochdale 2, Carlisle 3. A game that's just swung one way and then the other. Rochdale almost equalising from a corner as I speak. It was an own goal off from Marcus Holness that uh, gave Carlisle a shock lead against the run of play. But Joe Thompson and Matt Dunn put Rochdale back on course for the playoffs. Only for Liam Noble and Matty Robson, both with 25-yard strikes, to put Carlisle in front. It remains Rochdale 2, Carlisle 3.
Big goal at Bramall Lane. Harry Gration. Oh, massive goal, Gabby. Jordan Slew, 18-year-old lad, really hit that ball so, so well, so, so effectively. And David James, no chance at all. They're hanging by a thread. It's just a bit wider at the moment, though. 3-2. It's all over at Bloomfield Road. Richard Ascombe, they're going to have to share the spoils. They are, Gabby, yes. On the crest of a slump was how Ian Holloway described his team's recent form. Well, this was a performance that well and truly lifted them out of it, if not the three points that they desperately wanted. With David Vaughan restored to the side, he and Charlie Adam ran the game and the Seasiders had plenty of chances to win it. When DJ Campbell's flick cancelled out Peter Lovenkrantz's opener, the home side really grew in confidence. Baptiste had a shot cleared off the line. Charlie Adams saw one bounce off a post. Newcastle, though, grew more assured as the game wore on and they will be happy with their points. The Seasiders will feel that they should have had all three. A goal at the Stadium of Light, Steve Sutton. Yes, it's one back for Wigan. It's now Sunderland for Wigan, two across from the right. And uh, DeSanto first of the ball and powering into the back of the net from close range. Sunderland two, uh, Sunderland four, rather, Wigan two. Some goal, uh, it's a goal rather at Wish Park, uh, Hamish Marshall. Yeah, and it's a big blow to Bournemouth's pl promotion playoff hopes because Giovo, 10 men for most of the second half, have come from two goals to nil down to make it 2 2. The two goals that came from Bournemouth were a penalty and uh, a good finish from uh, Danny Ings' fifth goal in five games, but a penalty from Ivan, Adam Virgo made it 2 1, and a header from Sean McDonald in stoppage time has levelled things up. It's Bournemouth 2, Giovo 2. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Bloomfield Road and the draw there. You said a few times today, this is a bit more like Blackpool, a bit more like the yeah, side no, no, that, no, that no. we've seen earlier in the season. It, it, take away the, the, the result, which I think they probably deserved a little bit more than the one all and the point. Uh, there's a little bit of renewed hope. There was character, there was fight, there was inspiration, there was a bit of spirit that we they hadn't seen. They finished outside the bottom three, the way things yes, stand as Yes, well. yes, and, uh, and also it is an important point, don't, don't get me wrong. But you need something else sometimes, the performance more than anything that they can take out of There's that. a goal at the with, Dean, affecting matters at the top of the table, of course. Andy Barwell, who's it gone to? It's gone to Southampton. It's Brighton 1, Southampton 2. The second Saints goal coming with just one minute left on the clock of normal time. Jose Fonte bundling the ball home. The uh, Brighton defenders and uh, keeper Casper uh, Ankeran all stopped, all expecting to see the assistant uh, flag being raised, but there was nothing given. So it's a goal for Southampton. It's Brighton 1, Southampton 2. Uh, that does two things. It pumps them above Huddersfield into the second automatic promotion spot in League One and also takes away their unbeaten record, uh, Brighton at home this season. Uh, let's go, though, to uh, the pitches there at Molyneux. It's full-time, it's one apiece, and having gone out of the bottom three today, Garth Wolves uh, back in it. Second from bottom, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I mean Bobby Zamora does absolutely fantastic for the Fulham goal. Deep into the box, challenges, the ball breaks, Andy Johnson latches onto it and uh, he gets the equaliser. He doesn't score many, Andy, but he won't score more important for, for Fulham than, than the, the, the goal today. Let's get the details from Steve Lee. Yes, a hot, sweaty battle in the sun at Molyneux. Wolves not getting the victory there, and their fans so desperately needed today, but certainly a deserved point for Fulham. They have much of the possession and most of the chances. Steve Fletcher's eighth goal of the season in all competitions gave Wolves the lead in the first half from Guadiora's cross. Sub Andy Johnson levelled after Bobby Zamora's knockdown in the second, Hangeland putting in the cross there. Fulham boss Mark Hughes sent to the stands by referee Michael Oliver for aiming that trusty right boot at a water bottle. He was sent to cool off. Kakuta could have won it at the death of Fulham, but in the end it finished. Wolves won, Fulham won. And it's all over at Villa Park. Uh, the sport... And uh, it was something of a rout. And our... Revival continues apace. And it's all over at White Hart Lane. Jonathan Ledger... Draw to celebrate at White Hart Lane. Let's go to East End Park, it's all over there. Dunfermline, Brian McLaughlin, would you say, with one foot in the SPL? Almost, Gabby. Dunfermline 2, Wraith Rovers 1, now within three points of a return to the SPL, thanks to a second-half double from Martin Hardy after John Baird fired Rovers into the lead four minutes before the break. Dunfermline now four points clear with just two games left. Dunfermline 2, Wraith Rovers 1. What a comeback, what a result, and what a way to take three points for Sunderland at the Stadium of Light. Steve Sutton. Yes, it's finished Sunderland for Wigan 2. It started so disastrously for the home side. Within a few minutes, Phil Bardsley was stretched off. Not long after him, Danny Welbeck went off with what looked like a, a hamstring injury. And then at the restart of the second half, Wigan took the lead through a, a blistering Diame shot. But that lead only lasted a few minutes before Asamoah Gian with a towering header, brought it level. 
Henderson, Jordan Henderson, made it 2-1 for Sunderland. Gian was stretched off with a hamstring injury. Cessignon for Sunderland scored from the spot to make it 3-1. Henderson got his second and Sunderland's fourth before DeSanto made it a slightly nervy ending at 4-2. Sunderland surely safe now, but Wigan's relegation problems continue. Sunderland 4, Wigan 2. Let's go to Pride Park. Uh, Burnley have won their last three and all of a sudden they're in the playoff party. Andrew James. Yes, you wouldn't bet against them as well, Gabby, on this form. 2-1 down at half-time, Burnley looked out of it, but they got back into it with a penalty which uh, Chris Eagles initially saw saved, but he followed in with a rebound. And then further goals from Wade Elliott and Chris McCann against 10-man Derby, who had Jamie Ward sent off in that penalty incident, gave Burnley all three points, three wins on the trot. And remember Blackpool last year, Derby 2, Burnley 4. Thank you, Andrew, but uh, Hull didn't do themselves any favours this afternoon at the KC Stadium. Paul Addison. No, they could have blown their playoff hopes. Hull 2, Middlesbrough 4. Hull took the lead as early as the third minute through Jay Simpson. The game completely turned on its head by two Scott McDonald goals in the space of two minutes. Julio Arca added a third for Borough before McDonald completed his hat-trick in first half added on time. Just glimmers of a fight back from the Tigers in the second half. An Anthony Gerrard goal made it a nervy last 20 minutes for Middlesbrough, but they held out and now they're mathematically safe from the drop. Hull two, Middlesbrough four. An important point at Fratton Park for Swansea today. Alex Gordon-Martin. Yeah, it's finished Portsmouth nil, Swansea nil. The first point in five away games for Swansea, but that's the only positive they can take from another dismal performance away from home. Just two shots on goal, none on target. A fair play to Pompey for the desire they've shown here with no real end-of-season target to aim for. Nugent and Ryderson very nearly scored in the first five minutes, but apart from that, from that very little to report. Swansea still on course for the playoffs, but you'd worry for them as they stutter unconvincingly over the line. It's finished here, Portsmouth nil, Swansea nil. OK, let's get the full classified results now with Tim Gudgeon. And in the Barclays Premier League, Aston Villa 1, Stoke City 1. Blackpool 1, Newcastle United 1. Chelsea and West Ham United have an evening kickoff. Liverpool 5, Birmingham City 0. Manchester United 1, Everton 0. Sunderland 4, Wigan Athletic 2. Tottenham Hotspur 2, West Bromwich Albion 2. And Wolves 1, Fulham 1. In the end power championship, Cardiff City 2, Queen's Park Rangers 2. Derby County 2, Burnley 4. Hull City 2, Middlesbrough 4. Millwall and Preston North End kick off shortly. Portsmouth 0, Swansea City 0. Sheffield United 3, Bristol City 2. Watford 1, Barnsley 0. In power league 1, Brighton and Hove Albion 1, Southampton 2. And the latest in Bristol Rovers, 2, Charlton Athletic, 2. Rochdale, 2, Carlisle United, 3. Swindon Town, 1, Notts County, 2. Walsall, 1, Sheffield Wednesday, 1. And Yeovil Town, 2, AFC Bournemouth, 2. In League 2, Accrington Stanley, 3, Bradford City, 0. Aldershot Town, 1, Burton Albion, 2. Cheltenham Town, 0, Macclesfield Town, 1. Gillingham 2, Barnet 4, Hereford United 0, Shrewsbury Town 2, Oxford United 0, Chesterfield 0, and Port Vale 1, Stockport County 2. In the Blue Square Premier, Altrincham 1, Newport County 3, Barrow 0, Grimsby Town 2, Bath City 1, sorry, Bath City 2, Histon 1, Cambridge United 1, Hayes and Yedding United 0. Darlington 2, York City 1, Gateshead 0, Wrexham 1, Gettering Town 2, Forest Green Rovers 1, Luton 3, Eastbourne 0, and Tamworth 0, Southport 1. In the Clyde Selbank Scottish Premier League, Dundee United 4, Kilmarnock 2, Hearts 3, Motherwell 3. The Arnbrew Scottish Division 1, Dunfermline 2, Wraith Rovers 1. Partick Thistle 2, Greenock Morton 0. Queen of the South 2, Garden Beath 2. Ross County 0, Dundee 1. And Stirling Albion 1, Falkirk 2. 
Scottish Div 2, Airdrie United 2, Livingston 4, Allo Athletic 1, Stenhouse Muir 2, Brecon City 0, 4 for Athletic 1, Dumbarton 1, Air United 2, and Peter Head 0, East Fife 2. And Scottish Div 3, Arbroath 4, Montrose 1, Berwick Rangers 1, Clyde 1, East Stirlingshire 2, Elgin City 1, Queen's Park 2, Albion Rovers 1, and Stranra 1, and an Athletic 1. And in the Welsh Premier, Haverford West 0, Airbus UK Broughton 2, Newtown 1, Aberystwyth Town 0, and Portalwood Town 1, Bangor City 1, a late result. The Carling Premiership, Ballymena United 1, Newry City 0, Coleraine 2, Dungallon Swifts 1, Crusaders 3, Portadown 1, Glenavon 3, Donegal Celtic 0, Glentoran 2, Lisbon Distillery 1, and Linfield 1, Cliftonville 0. And just one late kickoff uh, to tell you about. They're still playing, um, I believe, at the uh, Memorial Stadium, uh, Bristol Rovers and Charlton. It's uh, two all. No, it's a result. We've just heard they finished. So in League One, it's two all there. Let's have a little look then at the tables and the Premier League. A record 19th league title in sight for Manchester United. This you sense they've extended their lead to nine points. Chelsea and Arsenal, of course, yet to play this weekend. Manchester City aren't in action until Monday, but they remain above Spurs in the race for the final Champions League place. At the bottom, well, not pleasant reading for the three Ws. West Ham prop up the table, but they could move three places with an unlikely win at Chelsea in the late kickoff. Wolves remain 19th. Wigan traded place with Blackpool, for whom a point is enough to lift them out of the relegation zone. And to the Championship, well, the Champagne is on ice for QPR as their lunchtime draw with Cardiff means that their promotion party must wait another day. Victory over Hull at home on Monday will seal their return to the top flight. Cardiff remain in third place, a point adrift of Norwich in the second automatic promotion place. A late goal for Sheffield United breathes life into their survival bid. They still remain six points from safety with three games left. United's result puts the pressure on Preston to get a result from their tricky-looking match at Millwall, which kicks off shortly. <coughs> Excuse me. And in League One, champions Brighton lost their unbeaten home record to Southampton, who consequently moved back into the second automatic promotion spot at the expense of Huddersfield. No changes in the top nine other than that. At the bottom, Swindon remained bottom, having failed to respond to Plymouth's win yesterday. Rovers and Warsaw earned a point today. In League Two, Chesterfield already sealed promotion yesterday. Shrewsbury took a po positive step towards joining them in League One. Gillingham's playoff bid took a blow, a shock defeat to Barnet for them. At the bottom, that stunning result for the Bees puts them just a point behind Northampton as the fight to avoid dropping out of the Football League intensifies. Stockport live to fight another day, remains six points from safety with three games left. <coughs> and the Blue Square, Champions Crawley broke through the 100-point barrier yesterday. AFC Wimbledon and Luton both in the playoffs with Wrexham and Fleetwood in pole position to join them. At the bottom, Altrincham avoided relegation today, but a home defeat leaves them on the brink. Southport improved their survival chances no end with a win at fellow strugglers Tamworth. And to the SPL, Hearts' draw with Motherwell means they consolidate third spot. Dundee United's comfortable 4-2 win over Kilmarnock puts them eight points clear of Killy in fourth. Rangers and Celtic, of course, play tomorrow. Let's get the headlines then from the Premier League today. Four, Wigan two, Steve Bruce left jumping for joy as injury-ravaged Black Cat side come from behind to thrash Wigan. Jordan Henderson, the star, with two goals. Blackpool 1, Newcastle 1, no relaxing by the seaside for relegation threatened Blackpool. They earn a hard-earned point against Newcastle courtesy of DJ Campbell's equaliser. Wolves 1, Fulham 1, Andrew Johnson stepping off the bench to dent Wolves bid to escape the bottom three. Stephen Fletcher had given Mick McCarthy's side an early lead. Liverpool Tottenham 2, West Brom, Aston Villa 1. Billy Lineker joined by Alan Hansen and Alan Shearer to discuss all of that. Of course, it's repeated tomorrow morning as well. Right after that, Manish has the Football League wrapped up for you. Match of the day 2 is on at 10.35 on BBC2 tomorrow, featuring Bolton against Arsenal. Uh, excuse me while I have a little cough. Uh, of course, I would get a cough at the bit of the show where I have lots and lots of talking to do. Sorry about it's that. Um, yes. A huge day for matters at the bottom, you sense, today, with all that chopping and changing going on. What do we know we didn't know at 3 o'clock today? 
Well, I think we know that um, Sunderland are out of it. They they now survive for me. They, they have, yeah. They've got beyond the finish line. And I have to say, they did it in dramatic fashion because at one stage, they were well in the relegation fight. Got to watch that tonight because all sorts of incidents happen. Uh, I also think what's interesting is Blackpool. Blackpool may not have got three points, but they've got to, they've got they can fight for another day. They, they showed a bit they of grit, to fight a bit another of determination. Day. I, I yeah, they did. They've been missing. The one thing they can take out of it is that they've got they they will have a chance of staying up on that performance. They wouldn't have before that, but they've somewhat turned the corner back to the old Blackpool that we know had a right go right throughout the second half. They were the one. Who's safe for then? Themselves. I mean, are we now saying Stoke on 39 and Fulham on 39? Not so much mathematically safe, but they are. Well, you would say In away effect, from danger. In effect, you're asking them to get a draw, maybe one win. I, I mean, 40, 40, 41. You're not going to be far away. And I also think. have to say, I mean, you look at the game on match today. Like Blackpool versus uh, Newcastle, uh, and Martin Atkinson <coughs> makes a very, very important decision. On there are three penalty appeals, of which I think two are justified. Um, he refuses to give them. There's a goal that goes in that's again borderline. We're not quite sure. Is it in? Is it not? He gives the goal again. An awful lot hanging on referees' decisions that can affect top. So and it's bottom. Birmingham City down from 38 points. Would you yes. say? Yes. I so would you've say, got the yeah. three Bs, Birmingham, Blackburn Rovers and Blackpool, and then the three Ws, all still deep in trouble. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's okay. plenty of games in the mix. Well, you can have your say on 606 and Radio 5 Live with Darren Fletcher and Robbie Savage, of course. They're dying to hear from you. Uh, that's it from all of us here for now on BBC One. Of course, the debate continues, and we'll be hearing from the managers and the players as well over on the red button. Do join us there. We'll see you next time. Thank you.